All right, guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the MR Aero Design PC6 Pilatus Turbo Porter aircraft. Doing some cool things in this video. The focus of this video is installing the cowl. Now, while this is specific to this aircraft, this is going to help you if you are installing a cowl with a turboprop. It's gonna give you probably some different ideas, probably some different theories and some thought processes behind doing this. So let's roll this intro and we'll get in to putting this cowl on the plane. video we did a little bit of filling on this firewall area and we got uh, kind of the areas that were a little bit low hollow spots and stuff like that filled we need to sand that flat but basically when we're installing the cowl on the aircraft you can't shouldn't fit the cowl so you shouldn't 100% fit the cowl to the aircraft and then split the cowl and then put the engine in the problem with that is the cowl might need to be adjusted just slightly. So really what needs to happen is you kind of need to come up with your plan of attack of how the cowl is going in. Cowl needs to be split so the engine can be installed and then things can be adjusted after that. So we have kind of a multi-step process in this cowl installation video. Number one, we need to come up with our theory and ideas. Number two, we're gonna need to split the cowl reinforce the cowl, figure out the doors. Then we need to put the engine in, figure out how we're mounting the cowl. Uh, we do need to figure out ventilation in this video as well to airflow and things like that. So there's a lot going on in this video. I'm gonna try and keep it as brief as possible. I've been trying to keep the videos at about 30 minutes and I've been pretty successful. So hopefully this one continues on that path. So thanks guys for tuning in. If you haven't done so already, hit that thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button down below if this is your first time finding my channel. And when you hit that subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Let's get cracking. Okay guys, so step number one with the cowl, I have been doing quite a bit of thinking on how I wanna get this fast and things like that. But uh, step number one, we need to reinforce the door area just to make sure that it's nice and stiff and it keeps its shape and everything. So we're gonna put a layer of a uh, heavy carbon cloth um, over the door area. It's gonna, gonna overlap the remaining cowl area just a little bit. But uh, this is the door that we are opening. And uh, I've already sanded this area out and that's basically ready to go. Our cloth is cut. We just need to mix up our West Systems um, stuff here. So we're using 105 resin, 206 hardener. This is what we're gonna be uh, glassing the plane with as well too. All right guys, so the carbon cloth has been installed. And if you take a look on the inside here, it's quite dry. And the reason it's dry is once I lay it in there, I take a blue shop towel and get all the resin off. And the resin's not your friend, it's not the strong part. So you wanna minimize the amount of resin on there because that uh, reduces the amount of weight as well too. So anyways, that's the carbon cloth installed. All right, good morning guys. It is the next day and our carbon and resin and everything is nice and cured. So it did add quite a bit of stiffness to that side. It's hard to tell right now, but it's uh, there's very, very little flex uh, in this entire area. So that is awesome. Happy with the way that that worked out. Um, anyways, next big step here is we need to cut out the door and split the cowl. So what we're gonna do is first of all, cut the door and that's a big step. Once that's done, we'll split the cowl. Now what we're gonna be using for this is uh, the Dremel extension, just cause we need uh, to get this 90 degree to the cowl. If you use your Dremel, uh, you're dealing with the size of the Dremel. I'm gonna be using the 409 cutoff wheels. Anytime you're using a rotary tool, 
eyeglasses. I like to have hearing protection on. In this case, we're gonna have the vacuum going and a mask on because we are cutting carbon. But uh, it's super important, guys, when you're using these discs, uh, especially the ones that aren't fiber reinforced, so they're the thinner ones, uh, you gotta have eye protection on because these things, uh, if you get a little bit of a funny angle or anything like that, uh, they're they're very very prone to shattering so but the reason we're using this one is because it's going to be a thinner cut line and it's going to look better so that's what i'm working on now um, i'll show you guys the final result once i get the door out uh, that'll be the next big step all right that worked out absolutely awesome guys and this uh this door is nice and stiff so i'm happy that i put the carbon on there i think that was a really good idea and i do think that this is enough uh, with this heavyweight carbon to uh, to keep the shape and everything. So that worked out perfect. Our lines are nice and tight. So now that that's done, next step is we need to split the cowl. Stressful, stressful, not really, but anyways, that's, uh, that's what we need to do next. All right, there's a quick shot of uh, what the cowl opening is gonna look like in relation to the airframe. Tons of good access there. That is great, I think. It worked out perfect. All right, cowl has been split, guys. That worked out great. So very, very, uh, very happy with the result there. So next thing we gotta do is we gotta figure out the cowl mounting on to the fuselage. Now, one of the problems is that these exhaust tubes, uh, the exhaust manifold uh, is wide. And because of that, when you go to fit anything, obviously it doesn't really fit. So there is some scale uh, circles right in that carbon area. You might be able to see them but they don't quite line up properly with where the turbine needs to sit. So essentially what I need to do is I, I put the fuselage on this piece of wood, weighted it down with a bunch of the uh, paints and stuff that we're gonna be using on this plane. So the, the fuselage is now set on this piece of wood. The wood is magnetized down or stuck in place with magnets. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna find a repeatable location for this um, end of the turbine. So what I need to do is I need to get something that I can take on and off here and basically give me a template of where this is. Because then I need to take the turbine off and get the cowl set up to line up with the end cap or end of the turbine. So hopefully that makes sense, but basically I need a way to have this location without the turbine being in there. So working on that. All right guys, so what I did was take this piece of wood, uh, get it nice and square up and down, okay? And then what I did was pick a side like this one where I can put a square on the edge like that. And now we've got our flush line, okay? So that's always going there and sitting flush. And we've got our lines on the front and the back which determine our position. Then what I did was use some spray glue and spray glue a piece of paper on this side of the wood just so we have a nice surface to deal with. And next thing I did was go in with a pencil and just shade around the shaft. So now the shaft is unshaded. So now I've got my drill point where I can drill the wood so this piece of wood can go onto the shaft. And then what I can do is I can trace out the back plate for the prop right there on the piece of wood. All right guys, so now what I did was obviously take that piece of wood, traced out the back plate and cut it out. So now we've got a visible, repeatable location for the turbine end. Now what I can do is I can take the engine out and I have the location with this for the whole end of the engine. So hopefully that makes sense because really without that you basically can't get the cowl set up. I mean you'd, you'd be risking installing the cowl and not having it 
um, set up properly. And part of the problem too is this cowl doesn't fit over the fuselage like a kind of a normal setup. So you have zero movement in the cowl. It butts into the firewall, right? So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Anyway, so next step is I'm going to pull the engine off and then just start um, kind of messing around with the location of the cowl in relation to my little template thing here. All right, so a couple things here, guys. First of all, uh, you can see the gap underneath the cowl. So basically we need that gap to be as level as possible. And so what I did here was I marked the center line from the hole uh, two inches in each direction. And now we've got markings where the four inch cowl opening needs to line up. So the actual spinner back, back plate is three and a uh, half inches. The opening is four inches and that's basically a scale. So there'll be a, I think a quarter inch um, opening all the way around the cowl. If you look at the scale plane, that's uh, what it looks like. So now when we get this, this is gonna be hard to show you cause I need two hands, but when we get this lined up and sitting against the firewall, basically we have a reference point as to how much the cowl needs to be sanded on the left hand side in our view to bring the cowl over this way right so that's the ultimate goal is i knew that would need to happen but we need a reference point to measure to so we're going to number one level out the cowl and take some material off of this side here the left hand side from our view so that's what we're gonna work on and ultimately getting this cowl spaced in between these two marks here. All right, guys, I think we got everything fit just beautifully. Oh, we need bent screwdriver. Bent screwdriver, you're the perfect pointing device. Okay, so what we've done is we have the four inch or two inch and two inch mark, and then also from the center point here came down two inches. So. Uh, it helps to have this prop uh, adapter thing. And so we measured that down. And so now we've got the point where our lower portion of our cowl should intersect with that line. So I won't show you specifically with this like I did before, but basically with our cowl raised in place, held in place, what we're doing is we're just making sure that the black lines of the spinner right here and here are within those two marks. And then looking from this side here, also making sure that our black line for our spinner intersects with that two inch line that we drew on the piece of wood. So right now, what we've done is we've basically sanded the back side of the cowl completely flat so our gap is is perfect all the way around the uh, the cowl and then as we needed to we took some additional material off this side and off this side of the cowl to get it angled to the right angle so right now very happy with that I think that's a great fit so I think the next step that we're gonna do is we can cut the original firewall. We can figure out what we're doing here to cut around this area. And once that's figured out, we can glue it into place on the cowl. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in these little gaps with some plywood and some glue or epoxy. All right guys, so we got the firewall all cut out. So that's the lower portion that fits in the lower half of the cowl and obviously the top part with the cutout we have to make goes in the top. So next thing we need to do before we glue this onto the cowl is we need to line this with uh, thin balsa. So the next size down in balsa, I can't remember what size this was, but 330 seconds is what we used for the sheeting. And we need to go down in size because we are combining the thickness of the balsa and the cowl to achieve our final thickness to match up 
to the fuselage. So hopefully that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this entire former with balsa. And then once that's done, going to glue it inside the lower portion of the cowl. All right, guys, so that kind of gives you an idea of exactly what we're doing here. When you look at the joint in the cowl between the paper, it's nice and flat, right? So the goal here is to glue everything flat so when we put this cowl against the firewall, it sits nice and flat. So because this is polyester, um, what we're gonna do is, like anything, you should, or you need to sand the contact area where we're going to glue into. So I'm gonna give this a good sanding, a good cleaning with rubbing alcohol, and then I'm going to glue this all together and let it cure overnight. All right, guys, everything is glued. So that former is glued in place. We've got it kind of positioned, squished in place, held in place. I'm gonna add a little bit of weight on the top here just to make sure that everything's uh, compressing, but it uh, doesn't move at all when I give it some pressure. So that worked out good. Uh, just an FYI, in case you're wondering what adhesive I used. So I ended up using West Systems, uh, the 610 adhesive. Um, really the only reason is I ran out of high sol. So, and I didn't want to use any of the, the quick cure high sol. I wanted a long cure product. So that's why I use the 610 material. So it kind of looks like um, yellow Vaseline, I guess, is the best way to, to tell you what it looks like. So anyways, that is what the 610 looks like. Uh, consistency, it's a lot like high sol and uh, works works great. So anyways, we're gonna let this cure overnight and we will be back tomorrow morning to continue. All right, good morning guys. It is the next day and our epoxy is all cured. I just pulled this off of the paper backing that I had it sitting on. So we still have a little bit of cleanup to do with all the, uh, the leftover paper and stuff, but uh, it's still relatively flat. So let's put this in place and see how it fits. I've already put it in place, but uh, it's a really, really good fit, but we do have to make a slight modification to the cowl. All right, so a couple things here that we're checking. Number one, centering of the nose cone in between my two four inch marks, and we are really, really good, really close there. So. Um, yeah, so that worked out good. I can't show you because it's at the front end here. Second thing we can look at is the depth of the nose cone. And we're right on my two inch line that I have drawn on the front of the block. So that is perfect. And the last thing is just the overall shape. So the only thing we're gonna to have to change is this edge right here. We do have some sanding of the fuselage, which I was expecting and hoping anyways, because that helps with um, fitting the cowl to the fuselage. I'd rather have to sand the fuselage than obviously make the cowl bigger or something like that. So we do have an issue in this section right here. So hopefully the camera can pick that up. But basically this part of the cowl is proud of the fuselage. When I put this all together, I put balsa on the sides obviously, and then just the hard angle of the, the this side of the fuselage and the addition of the carbon cloth push this out a little bit. And so what I'm gonna do, or what I have to do, is take my Dremel and basically from this point right here, I have to Dremel that joint out. And we just wanna make that more flat with the cowl. All right guys, so I've already put this up and checked it out. So basically this relief cut with my Dremel is just perfect if I glue this end piece down flat. So that's gonna make this cowl line up absolutely perfect. I'm super happy with this. Uh, I've mixed up a little bit of West Systems stuff to patch in all that. So I'm gonna do this and we'll have to clamp it and let it cure. All right guys, it was a bit of an unproductive day today just because we were waiting for that one part on the cowl to cure all day. Couldn't really do anything else that would have been wise to be doing. Uh, so basically just waited for the glue to cure. It's now late at night and not late, but later. And we've got the lower portion of the cowl kind of in its final position. So what I did here was I was able to clamp the 
makes cowl into position. And with it clamped in position, I got it all lined up. Just put a temporary screw through on that side because we had good access and got this side lined up and taped into place. So right now, our lines are really good. We basically have a section here and then down along the bottom uh, to this side here that we need to sand. So I was kind of expecting that. So now what I've done is I put the top part of the cowl on, butted it up as far as it would go against the firewall, and we're a little bit long on the top part of the canopy, which again is good and to be expected because I did sand the bottom portion. So what I've done is, is this section here is already short enough, probably the right amount. And I've just taken black Sharpie and marked along the edge all the way around to the other side. Now we do have a little nick in the cowl right here, which by our final measurements probably will actually work out okay. So what I'll do now is I will take this top part of the cowl to my belt sander and basically just sand down that Sharpie area to try and get it uh, to line up better. All right guys, so we've got everything lined up where it needs to be. Uh, the fit is really, really good. Happy with all that. So now I was just, I put the former in just to confirm that we do have everything lined up and we've got enough space around the edge of the former to glue it all into place. So we look good there. There's a bit of a gap all the way around the former so that should work out great so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull this stuff off and then I will get the former and the top part of the cowl glued all right and we always talk about the magnet table but this is another example of how amazing it is so um, yeah so basically it uh, obviously glued it in place we're going to let this dry overnight so the cowl is sitting level with the table, the former sitting level, and that's basically all we need to do. It's uh, With all those magnets around there, it's extremely solid. And then uh, once I got all the glue in place, just go back and push all the magnets and uh, it is tight. So once that cures, we should be really, really close to being able to bolt this cowl in place. All right, guys, that worked out really, really well. I'm happy with the way that that turned out and uh, just gonna need a little bit of sanding on the back side, and it's going to be perfect. So let's pop this thing on and see how it fits. All right, guys, fits really, really well. I need to do the sanding on the back side just because it's not quite butting in properly, but really, really close to, uh, to being a perfect fit, so happy with the way that worked out. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna just sand the backside, check the fit, confirm everything's good. All right guys, everything is bolted in place. It was a bit of a bear to get the uh, the bolts, well basically to drill those holes and line them up because you need to drill them from the inside. Getting the bolts in and out actually isn't that bad at all, so um, not a big deal if this cowl needs to come off, but uh, I'm really happy with the way that this thing all lined up. Uh, our our joint line is going to basically be invisible and uh, looks great so so happy with that so that's all bolted up and done all right guys opening is cut I left it just a little bit uh, shy the black line you can see there is the actual line but I uh, left it about a millimeter shy all the way around some areas more so I know lots of people uh, at this stage of the aircraft and once we start glassing and stuff like that, there's gonna be a lot of critics on how I do everything. Now keep in mind guys, there's lots of different methods, lots of different ways to do stuff. Uh, your way is not the right way, nor is my way the right way. There's lots of different ways to do things. Um, sometimes there's only one way. I mean, to put a bolt in, there's only one way to put a bolt in. But, um, you know, to install or glass or things like that, there's lots of different ways to do things. So, we've gone with bolts from the back side on this cowl. Now, I know people are gonna say it's gonna be really hard to access and all that kind of stuff. So, I'll show you guys. So, right now, I'm gonna be taking the top part of the cowl off and both sides of this aircraft are gonna have doors that open up. So, here's what it looks like. 
So I need to undo both of the bolts on the front. So I don't even know where my bolt is. There we go. Front doors will also open. So once my tool's in place, I still have a good four inches before my elbow actually even gets close to the uh, rib here where the door is. So the other option too is we can actually, I can sneak my arm in through the front door, uh, the pilot door or whatever you want to call it, and do that as well too. And that makes it even easier. So really it's not a big deal at all. So one bolt's undone, other bolt. I'm just feeling with my hand on the front part of the Allen key and then I run it back. So in real time, only doing this about two or three times now, the front cowl is off. All right, so I think we're pretty much good as far as engine position goes. I have sanded out the bare minimum around the exhaust manifold, around the pipes, just to provide enough clearance. Now, because this cowl is so narrow, the little welds on the bottom here, actually, you need a fair bit cut out, but by the time we add a quarter inch all the way around, that actually ends up being quite a bit, right? So there's a quarter inch dowel there, and or a quarter inch square, so you can see how much we actually have to work with, so. Anyway, so engine is really, really well positioned right now. I put this spare back plate for a spinner that I had on there. And basically we've got half an inch all the way around here, which is great. So our position is really, really good. I've got the uh, engine rails clamped down with a, uh, a clamp on that side. Another reason to, to uh, add that door there is to just get more access. So a couple things here, I think this pipe is gonna be really stinking close, um, really, really close. So we're gonna do a test run and test run series on this engine this coming weekend. So after that, if I need to bend this pipe, I'm gonna try and bend the pipe. I've got the owner's consent to, uh, to try that. I really don't think we'll need to, to do very much. So I think that'll be perfectly possible. <clears throat> so anyways, um, engine is positioned. So what I did was I just took my um, top part of my cowl and traced it out on a piece of paper and just made a template here and then I've just been slowly cutting it away to get it really really close to the engines. Alright guys there we are. So with the mock-up spinner this is only a three inch spinner the stock one is three and a half so but we've got a half inch gap all the way around the spinner or the back plate. So it's perfectly centered right now, which is absolutely awesome, looks great. Now if I can, I'll throw in a picture here of um, the actual full scale. And the full scale basically has a very similar looking gap to that. So the uh, there's just a hair of a gap in between the back plate of the spinner and the cowl. So I think it's gonna work out just perfect. So we've got the gaps in the exhaust cones opened up just enough so everything fits and very, very happy with everything so far. It looks great. All right, guys, we got our special delivery today from True Turn and our spinner showed up. Man, that looks good. So we are at just under a quarter inch gap all the way around and it looks phenomenal. Really happy with the way that that turned out. And then positioning right now is awesome. I think it looks great. Nice gap between the cowl and the spinner. The spinner's not sitting quite flat. That's an idea of what it looks like when it's flat. So nice gap, nice angle, nice space. Love it. All right, guys, so what I've done is I have taken the cowl off the plane, obviously, but we've taped all the joints together with everything in the uh, kind of final resting spot. So next thing to do is line the joints with wood. So my first initial thought was to use some of this uh, thinner ply. I don't know what size it is. 
But uh, the problem with that is we need to sand this to conform to the angles. So I went with like quarter inch size and you can see the angles that we need in the pieces in order to achieve the um, the angle to match up to the cowl. So, so all my pieces are basically cut. So now what I need to do is I need to sand the joints on the cowl itself. So there's a bunch of rough excess material on these joints just because of the uh, the layup of this uh, this system. So anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand all the joint areas uh, in everywhere that we're doing the the plywood. And so we're doing all along the other side, we're doing this front section and the little joint here and the little joint right there. And uh, so I'm going to get all those areas sanded and then we will get these pieces glued into place. All right, guys, I didn't get any pictures of the glued uh, tabs just as I did it, but that gives you an idea of what I did there. So basically I took this quarter inch ply, rounded it out, cut the pieces to fit, and now this has been sitting for uh, about 20 hours and our adhesive is nice and strong. So when I got up this morning, what I did was I, uh, it had been about eight hours, six hours or so, eight hours, somewhere in there, and I bolted the cowl back onto the airframe and uh, it's been curing now for another 10 hours or so. And anyway, so this is ready to have the holes drilled, which will have the blind nut and the bolt holding the pieces together. So, so what we're using to bolt this together is just gonna be uh, 256 um, screws and 256 blind nuts, so it's all very, very small. And yesterday I did pick up some additional uh, screws and also some split washers and flat washers um, so we don't have to use any uh, any Loctite on these things but anyways this is our stuff that we're using for it I don't know if we need more blind nuts but anyways that's how we're bolting the cowl together all right so what I've done guys is just drilled through everything taped together still so everything's perfectly aligned and our holes all get lined up so I've drilled through now what I'll do is I'm gonna take these bolts out separate the cowl, pull the top part of the cowl off, and then we can worry about getting our blind nuts installed in the top part of the cowl. All right, guys, done with the bolting up of the cowl. So all the blind nuts and everything are lined up. I just rested the door in place and it looks amazing. Um, one of the benefits of using the former glued to the cowl and bolted through the inside is it adds so much support and stiffness. So like this area here, as I mentioned, because it's close to these two formers, there's zero movement there and everything's being held together by the bolts holding the cowl on, right? So you only need two on this side. And I mean, everything is really, really stiff and solid. And then we've got three on this side, again, really, really stiff and solid. Once we add that divider piece in the bottom, that's gonna help with everything as well. And uh, looks good, so. All right, so engine's out, cowl was put back together. We bolted it all together, sanded a little bit of the joints. Uh, I still have to do a final sanding, but just did a couple areas. And then I cut the openings for the exhaust. I didn't go excessively wide. I tried to keep it at a, a roughly a quarter inch all the way around, but I did go a little bit shy so we could we could touch it up later on. So all I did to get the quarter inch gap is basically with the turbine installed, uh, taking this, resting it against the exhaust and using a Sharpie to draw that as you worked your way around. So um, the only thing that's kind of funny in this scenario is because we start to get into the base of the exhaust on the top and the bottom, um, kind of just keeping this quarter inch profile all the way around initially with the flat output circle of the exhaust. So where I had cut it before was almost exactly in the right spot. So um, we may have to go a little bit wider on these top and bottom areas, but I, initially at first I wanted to keep that as much of a circle pattern as possible. All right guys, we are ready to start getting the platform separating the hot and the cold organized. So ultimately what's gonna happen here is we're gonna have a separation that is sitting just underneath where the plate comes out like this. So that's number one. Um, so that's going to come all the way and separate these cold channels from the hot section. We'll refer to the upper portion as the hot section. 
Then what's gonna happen is we're gonna have a tunnel. Imagine a tube coming down at an angle like this, and that's gonna allow some escape airflow to the scale detail on the underside of the cowl. So in order to build that shelf, I'm gonna to need to build it out of something light, so balsa, but I wanna have some fiberglass reinforced balsa. So doing the top side isn't a problem because you've got good access, the underside not so much. So I'm basically, I've taken a bunch of scraps, glued them together, so I've got a bigger one and a thinner one. This one I'm gonna to use to make the tunnel. And I'm just using some of the fiberglass that we're gonna glass this plane with to take care of this stuff. So I'm gonna use the West Systems epoxy resin, lay it over top of this, and then by tomorrow, this should be all nice and dry. And then what I did was I went ahead and added the supports on the engine section here. So that's these pieces of hardwood. They go from about here all the way to the front and they actually tie in with this front support. So this is one of those steps that you don't wanna do and kind of until you get to this point and you're happy with the way everything lines up. Now the reason for that is because you want there to be no differential between the front of the engine and the back of the engine. So you don't wanna have, uh, what I mean by that is you don't wanna have the engine bolted down and then have to like push the engine down to get the bolts lined up at the front here. It should all be perfectly symmetrical level and the engine should be supported front and back. So that part's all done. We've got a rail on both sides. That rail ties into the back plate of the engine support here. And then we've also glued the front engine support. So that's all gonna sit nicely and make sure that we're uh, nice and cured for tomorrow. Now I've gone ahead once I got this all set up and measured. So we're at an inch and an eighth, inch and an eighth, inch and an eighth. So I'm happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is just absolutely leave that alone. Let it cure till tomorrow. All right guys, and there's also a first shot with the quarter inch gap all the way around the exhaust. And that turned out, I think, great as well. Awesome. Maybe a little bit of cleanup to do there, but really happy. Really happy with the way that that all turned out. Awesome. All right guys, so our balsa that we covered in fiberglass yesterday, that's all cured and good. That worked out awesome. Now I just unbolted the turbine and so it gives you a close up here of the I-beams or uh, hardwood beams that I added to the extension on the engine mount. So now this is all extremely solid. There's zero play in there. And as I've discussed, you basically want the back of the turbine, front of the turbine to be supported and no movement within those two systems. That's extremely important. So anyways, this is all done and that worked out really well. Um, nice and solid on that. I'm, I'm quite impressed. I'm, I'm actually, it's got, it's stronger than I thought it would be. So, so next thing we're going to be doing and last thing in this video is we are going to be working on the separation between the hot and the cold. So that was what those pieces of balsa were for. So what I'll do is I'll throw up a picture now of the underside of the cowl, the scale airplane, and, and show you kind of exactly what our goal is. And that's gonna be how we make this tunnel in the center of the cowl area um, work with this entire system. So obviously with this cowl design, it would be nice to have the tunnel more uh, front to back. But with that exhaust that we have on the underside of the cowl, we're gonna to have to make it more side to side, which actually is gonna work out good because really that um, scale piece is really kind of in this area right about here. And we've got enough width here to make that tunnel coming down like this. So that uh, I think is gonna work out quite well. And I believe probably the best way for us to achieve that is number one, we're gonna get the piece cut that needs to go in the separation, not glued in place. And then we will work on making that tunnel um, and kind of figure that stuff out. So I'm gonna kind of get this stuff organized guys and I'll show you my next uh, progress with that. And tip time guys, everybody loves a good tip time in a video. Thanks to my buddy Chad, 
for telling me about this, something that he found. So if you lay down covering, this wasn't exactly what I was uh, intending to use this for, but it's a nice surface. Uh, if you lay down fiberglass against the covering, the epoxy doesn't stick to the covering. So the outside layer of the covering, not the adhesive side. And, and you can see with this, the epoxy just comes right off and it doesn't stick to the covering. So cool little tip. I actually didn't know that. And what, what kind of spurred this was he was talking about how you can lay down covering like this, lay down multiple sheets of fiberglass and make your own G10 material, which I'm totally gonna do. So obviously here's a really heavy sheet of G10, but you could conceivably make this with, you know, I don't know how many layers are there, but you know, 10 layers of fiberglass cloth. Um, so kind of cool to do as an experiment, but uh, anyway, so that's the tip time for this episode. All right, guys, cowl is off. I actually ended up cutting the opening for the air intake area, so that is done. Now, one thing I did here is I left the these areas with the round corners. Initially, the, the real reason for that is the round corner is less likely to crack, split, anything like that. Uh, I may bring it to this sharp corner, but first thing I did was just go to the round corner. And now this is a lot more flexy now that that piece is cut out. So I think adding that air separation is going to make a pretty substantial difference to the stiffness of the structure but uh, we'll have to see how that all works out. But yeah, I did, uh, did make this a little bit more flexy. So anyways, that's, uh, that step's done. So now I'm working on uh, figuring out what I'm gonna do for the split. All right, guys, so this hopefully gives you an idea exactly what we're thinking about here. So that's the, uh, the tunnel, all right? And we are going to have this front part here angled down a little bit. So that's all gonna be in the gluing uh, portion of this. And then with the leftover uh, laminated fiberglass and balsa, I made the tunnel that's gonna go inside like that. So I cut that at a 60 degree angle using my cutter board here. So I just basically cut pieces and made the tunnel. Now the tunnel's wider than it is. So it's wider than it is long because that shape on the bottom of the, the cowl area is that shape. So anyways, we've got the tunnel um, made. I need to square that off in the belt sander a little bit. But um, so now the big challenge is just getting the right height and getting that kind of glued in place as well. All right, guys, so I'll show you kind of in reverse what I did here. Uh, so there's everything installed. Nothing's been glued yet, but that's the, uh, the tunnel in the position it's going to be in. That off, and there it is. So we have to do some cleanup here as well. Now I want to I wanna also, so the inside of this is lined with uh, fiberglass and epoxy and I'm gonna epoxy the outside just to protect it and uh, give it some you know some weathering protection but we have a quite a series of different gluings that we have to do here so we're gonna mix up some uh, some West Systems material just to use with the epoxy and then we're also gonna mix uh, mix up some other more stronger stuff to hold things in place and so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this down and then we're gonna epoxy the outside, and then we're gonna put this into place, CA it in just the, the corner so it's got the right shape, and then we're gonna epoxy and fiberglass this onto the cowl to take up the side spaces. So that's what's gonna happen. I'll show you guys the final product. All right, guys, and the last detail in this video, uh, we are working on, or I just finished up this uh, little scale louver cover, flap cover thing. Um, anyways, that's, uh, that's it. So this is just the extra fiberglass covered balsa that I had. And the other thing is what would make it nice and scale is if I cut that straight up instead of having the angle like that. But I think I'm gonna keep the, the extension of the triangle on on that end just uh, for support mainly so um, I might change it but we've got time anyways so anyways that uh, little louver cover thing is is created so awesome 
All right, guys, and that is everything on how to install a cowl on an MR Aero Designs PC6 Pilatus Turbo Porter. But really, uh, hopefully some of the things that I covered in this video you get some benefit from and you can really apply this stuff to any cowl installation. Uh, more knowledge, the better. So I'm happy guys that we did accomplish many, many things in this video. A big step here as well. Uh, we're a little behind schedule. Um, I'm filming this on Thursday. This is gonna come out on Saturday and I was really hoping that I would start prepping the fuselage this week, but we're close. So we do still have to work on the doors. So that's gonna be one of the big next steps for us to work on is going to be the doors. So the door of the cowl, the, the sliding door of the fuselage, and then getting this thing and all the other surfaces prepped and sanded and ready for fiberglass, which is gonna be cool as well. So, so the way I see it guys, there'll be one more video purely on uh, finishing up some miscellaneous little things. And then what we'll do is we'll get into the videos of covering the wings, surfaces, um, fuselage, things like that. So that's kind of the vision I have for it. And uh, making good progress, guys, on a good schedule for this, uh, this plane. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the videos. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, like always, list them down below. Feel free to reach out to me via email. Uh, the lighter side of rc at gmail.com don't forget guys to check out the website constantly adding things to the store the shop portion of the website there is a link down below uh, you can check out sweet wind turbines uh, very soon i'll be adding a couple little things uh, some cool 3d printing things that you've seen me use in my videos and some cool 3d printing things specific to sweet wind turbines so all that stuff is done locally by my buddy and that's why I have them on my channel. I know lots of people uh, own 3D printers and lots of people have that capacity, but I don't 3D print stuff and I think it's cool to support local people. So, so that's it guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you in the next video.